Let's see if we can't figure out what this noise is on this R6. Today we are going to dig into the top end of the engine. Hello my friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. I'm going to put a couple links up uh, here uh, about this R6 project that I've been working on. We got it running the other day and uh, we got an engine noise, uh, tracked down a cracked clutch plate. Oh, I just tossed those out. <laughs> I was going to show you the cracked clutch plate, which was not the problem. I mean, obviously it was an issue, but it wasn't the problem of the noise. So today we're going to get into the top end of this engine and uh, might as well do a valve check and valve adjust at the same time. Uh, I would run it up and show you the noise on it, but when you want when you want to do a valve clearance check, you should have a cold engine. So hopefully you take a peek at one of those previous videos and hear the noise. Now it sounds like it may be coming from the top end of the engine, I don't know, but uh, it's as good a place as any to start taking a look. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me bring you over here. In order to uh, get to the valve cover, of course you have to take the tank off, the seat off, and I already have some of the plastics off over here on that side. I don't know as if I have to remove any more on this side, uh, but we will see. So I want to get this tank off, the seat. If you've never removed a seat on one of these Yamahas, and many new sport bikes are like this, you just kind of peel the corner of the seat back and there are bolts underneath it. So that's how that comes off for the tank, at least on this. This is a 2005 R6. There's two bolts up here, and then the tank will pivot up off of this back bolt, and you can remove all the connections underneath here. Um, for me, I have this uh, maintenance stand, and I made this out of an old piece of a tie-down strap. It's got uh, Velcro on it, half of the uh, loop part on one side and half of the hook part on the other. And I can lift this tank up and hook it, holding it up. It makes it a lot easier. Sometimes you don't even have to take the tanks off when you do that. But I will be removing the entire tank just because it's going to be easier to get in there. So let me get this tank off and I'll show you uh, what's underneath there. Okay, there you can see the uh, amazing strap holding the tank up. Pivoting off of here. Disconnected my uh, little ghetto fabulous repair that I did on this fuel pump and the two uh, plugs, which you can't mess up. They're both different, so you can't mess them up. And the return line and then the vent lines. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the air box. I've already got all the screws loose on this. So loosen up the screws on the top, take that off. You can remove your filter. And then I know we have that one, and we'll have to see what else we got to disconnect. I know there's some uh, plugs on here, and at least one or two. There's a couple of uh, rubber lines that you have to disconnect. And I don't know what else, but we'll figure it out as we go here. Okay, so for for each throttle body, you have a uh, Allen head screw holding this on. So four of those, one, two, three, four. And then this thing will lift out after you take that one off. Um, you also have these Ram air tubes, one on each side. I think that's what they're considered anyway. Uh, there's a Phillips head screw there and one right there. You loosen those up, kind of wiggle that off. There's a rubber hose on this side. I don't know exactly what this is going to. Looks like it's a... Uh, vent or something off of these um, throttle bodies. So one on this side, we'll slide over to the other side. One on that side. And we have this cannon plug here. And let me see if I can get in there. There we go. So it's removed. Now we're looking down on our 
throttle bodies. And down in here is the valve cover. Oh, look at that. We've got some block off plates on this bike. That's interesting. Must be like an EGR delete or something of the sort. Anyway, in order to get there, now we have to remove these throttle bodies. So let's take a look at what is involved in getting those off. I'm sure there are some clamps down here. We're just going to have to see if we can't get around the bike. Excuse me. And they will be down in here somewhere. All right, let me uh, start moving some stuff out of the way and we'll see what we can find. To get these uh, throttle bodies off, you got to get that... Uh, Clamp loose. Looks like that one you attack from the other side. And uh, I don't know if I can get a light in here enough to see. The two on this side are facing from over there. And these two are facing from over here. I can see them. But they're in there. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get way in there with that. I might have to move some of this stuff out of the way. So I'm going to get cracking on that. And if I get a little bit better view, I'll show you. But that's really all there is, is four, four clamps, of course, one each. And then this should pop up out of here and everything is all hooked up to it. I like to try to leave as much stuff hooked up as I can. Um, like I may get away with leaving the throttle cables hooked up. I may have to pop it up and then disconnect them. We will see. So let me start moving some stuff out of the way and we'll see where we end up. All right, I'm going to show you this here. I have this long Allen socket and then two long extensions and then you have to feed in all the way from here amongst all the wires and hoses and other items that are in here and then I'll bring you up here in just a second you know I tried to get light in here a few times to show where that is but it's just so deep in there it's hard for me to I'm sorry about that show you but that's really what you got to do. Go all the way from here across to those two and then the same on the other side. But needless to say, I'm on the far right one right now and just loosened it up. And I've already loosened these two, so I just need to loosen that number three cylinder and then the throttle bodies will be loose and then we'll see what we need to remove after that. All the clamps are loose. I have removed this line off of... Uh, I don't even know what this is, to be honest. Looks like it maybe sets a fast idle or something. So this may be our air enrichment or choke or something like that. I have removed, there's a rubber hose that goes on right here. I removed that and now I am removing the throttle cables. Let's see if we can get this other one off. There we go. in the old stand here. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see from that, but let's see. still a pretty tight fit at this point. So let's see what else we're going to have to remove to get this thing. All I really need to do is just to get it up and out of the way a little bit. And I think that might just do it right there. It's not beautiful but it will work yeah here you can see these and uh, if you look at that it's got that little notch in it and then there's a little point on there that that fits on so those can only go in one direction so now we could look down in here and see what our uh, valve shrouds and the tops of the or the backs of the uh, intake valves look like but We'll take a look at that a little bit later. But for now, we're going to focus on trying to get this valve cover off. Now, if you take a sport bike in to get a, a valve check adjustment done, it is gonna cost you a pretty penny because you can already see we've got some time invested in getting to this point. And we don't even have the valve cover off. Now, getting the valve cover off, it's really not too bad at this point. We've got to remove the uh, spark plug coils, The I was going to say spark plug caps, but these are coils. They're coil on plug, C-O-P they call them. That's not too bad. Usually uh, a 
couple bolts. These might not even have bolts in them. Yeah, these just pull out. So we just pull those out, and then there's, looks like, six Allen head bolts. These are shoulder bolts that we need to remove. And we might have to move some of this stuff out of the way a little bit to get in here, but the tricky part is, is that they jam these things into the frame so tight. You can see it goes way over to here, and that's underneath this frame spar. This side looks like it's free and clear, so maybe what will happen is we'll lift it up and it'll be able to come out, but sometimes they're a little bit of a fight to get in and out. So we'll see, we'll take a look at it. I'm going to uh, remove these coils and remove all these, and then I will try to get you in here to watch me struggle on this. The uh, coil on plug caps are removed, uh, disconnected the plug-ins from them, and then there was also this plug that I removed, and then that whole wire harness can just be, there it is, the whole wire harness brought back here. I also removed these hoses, which hooked up here on the radiator, and that's what uh, went onto that piece there. So I guess that's something that reads the uh, coolant temperature, and like I said, it's probably a uh, fast idle or something. Now I got all these loose. Now if you get lucky, you loosen them up with the Allen wrench, and then you can turn them out with your fingers. Now, the problem is you're working on greasy stuff, and these are so smooth that um, your fingers slip on them, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. I kind of wish they had like a knurled edge or something on them because otherwise, like getting way back in there with the Allen wrench, you can turn it about 70 degrees, maybe 90 degrees if you're lucky. Probably not because, you know, you got six sides, so you can only turn it one, one side at a time. Six, 360, 60 degrees, there you go. Math. Mechanics need to know it. So I've got all of them removed. We got a little bit more room on this side now. So let's see if we can wrestle this thing out of here. And already I see that we're running into clearance issues on the radiator, which I was kind of expecting. So what we might have to do is it looks like this radiator pivots on the top and it mounts on the bottom here, maybe. So yeah, I think down there. A little bit of leakage from removing this. So I'm probably going to have to take that pivot bolt this way underneath here. You maybe can't see it. And then swing this radiator forward a little bit. Look at that. You can see the cam sprocket there. And our seal. We're almost out. If I put the camera down, I might be able to wiggle it out, but we're gonna be better off if we move that. So let's see what it takes to get that out of there. There's the bolt, I got it removed. It screws in there, so you can see I've already swung this forward. You can swing it forward a little bit. And as you can see, valve cover is removed. Um, it is a little bit of a fight because it is wider on this side over here. So I had to kind of lift it up and pull it out this way. But there we're looking at the top of the cams and looking down on the buckets that sit on top of the uh, valves. And I can see some of the valve springs down in there. You see them? There's a valve spring. And we're just looking for anything obviously wrong in here. And I don't see anything on first glance, but we'll take a good look. And then I'll show you how to check the valve clearance. Okay, after looking in here a little bit, I don't know how well this is going to show up on here. But there's some like coppery looking stuff right there, and there, and there, all around in here. Some looks like coppery stuff. So that would generally be copper or brass would be a bearing somewhere going out on the motor. Uh, I don't know if that's the case or not, but I don't see anything wrong on the top end just on initial glance but we will continue on we're in here we're going to do the valve adjust or valve check anyway so what you need to do is to set number one cylinder to top dead center so on the r6 at least the 2005 model there is a cover here 
there on the right side of the motor. You remove that with a large screwdriver. Underneath here is a 12 millimeter bolt attached to the crank. And you turn that over until there's a line here. And I'm probably not gonna be able to see this one. There's a line on the intake and the exhaust. There it is right there. You just barely can see it, I'm sorry, but the, there it is. So those two line up and then the lobes on the crankshaft should be facing outboard. So intake cam is outboard and the exhaust cam is outboard. That means we are on top dead center on the number one cylinder. And now I will get the valve clearance specs and we will check that cylinder. Looking up in the manual, we've got intake clearance of 0.13 to 0.20 an exhaust of 0.23 to 0.30 millimeters. I've got my trusty feeler gauge set here. Let me see here. This is not easy. All right, so this one here is 0.127. That's the closest I've got. That's the low limit for the intake valves. So what you gotta try to do is sneak it underneath the cam and the bucket and this one fits and that one I can't quite tell because I can't reach over here too good with one hand but what you generally do is you check to see if it fits and with the uh, lowest one and then you'll go to the highest one which would be a 0 0.20 which I think the closest I've got is a 0 0.203 Let's see if I can find it while I'm holding you here. Excuse me. Point two zero three. Focus. There you go. Point two zero three. So we'll check that on this one that I can reach too easily while I'm holding the camera. So the lowest one fits, the biggest one doesn't. So we are within clearance limits. And then you rotate the engine until your next cylinder is pointing the cam lobes. Of course, I got to check the exhaust as well. So I'll check them. Uh, and then you turn the engine. So in the manual, it says to turn it 180 degrees to reach to the next one. And then uh, whatever it is for the number three and then number four. So I'm going to check them all. I will write them down and I will show you the results. All right, let me shut off the doors here before they uh, try to steal my monetization. Oh, not even monetized. Okay, so like I said, here's the uh, specifications. And here's exhaust left and right on number one. All the way across the board, we are well within specs all the way across the board. So fortunately for me, but unfortunately for you, if you're watching this video... We do not have to remove the cams and do a valve adjustment. This is just a valve check. So if you're bringing your motorcycle in for a, a repair at a shop and they did a valve clearance check or valve clearance adjustment, it should be a different charge for both of them because at this point I would be reassembling this motorcycle. <clears throat> now if I had to do a valve adjustment, you have to remove these cam caps. You have to remove the cam chain tensioner and you have to remove the cams and then underneath there you have what are called buckets and you may just be able to barely see them here this is probably the best one you can see right underneath that cam lobe right there is the bucket so to get to that you have to remove the cam take all these eight bolts out remove that cam pull that bucket out underneath that is a very tiny shim you measure that shim and then if this was say say this one was too tight you have to do some math once again some mechanics have to know math you have to do some math and either add or subtract to figure out what the proper clearance is so if our clearance was off say it was five thousandths too tight we would put a five thousandths smaller shim underneath there which would increase the shim or increase the valve clearance and then once all is said and done so you'd measure them all then uh, you know, say it was uh, the left intake on uh, number one and the right exhaust on uh, number three. 
So you'd have to remove the intake and the exhaust cam, remove those shims, do the math, reinstall the new shims, put all this back down, torque it down, then recheck them. <laughs> And make sure your timing is set correctly again. Install your cam chain. Install your cam chain tensioner. So it's a lot more work when you have to do an adjustment. So there should be, like I said, two different charges for this. But uh, there's a reason why they charge a couple hundred bucks to do this. It's a lot of work. Now, like I said, there was some possible um, gold-colored debris in here. I don't know if that's what it is or not. That's just what it looks like. So I have that, which I have no reason, uh, nothing here that I can tell is causing that. And I also have this. I don't like the way that this cam chain is sitting on these um, sprockets here. I don't know how well you can see that, but it doesn't look like it's sitting on there very good. So what I'd like to do is measure this cam chain. I'm suspecting that it might be at its limit. So I have to look that up next. Usually what you have to do is measure between a certain amount of pins to see what the distance is between them. So I'm gonna look that up and then we'll come back and we'll check that. Reading the Yamaha manual, I couldn't find anything. It just said to check it for uh, obvious wear or tight spots or anything like that. And I looked at a few pictures, and they all look pretty similar to this. Even though I don't like it, I think that that's uh, normal. So I'm going to do a little bit more peeking around up here, and then I'm going to end up putting it back together. When it comes to reinstalling these valve covers, it can be a real pain in the ass. So I highly suggest that uh, the first thing you do when you take it off is to clean it up as much as you can. And uh, if this rubber gasket is not um, sealed to this, you clean it up and you seal it to the cover because um, installing it, it'll try to get stuck behind things. And you wanna make sure these half moons are down here in these little cutouts. There's four of them on this bike, you know, two on this side and two on the other side. But you wanna do a really good visual around to make sure that it's all flat and seated. None of it got tucked in behind. And sometimes it can be difficult, like back behind here, so you have to look very carefully, get a flashlight, a mirror if you need it, and then install all your bolts finger tight first, and then look up the torque value and torque them. If there's a sequence, and there usually is, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, they have like a cross pattern. Check to make sure that you have that correct. Also, there are uh, seals inside of here that go around these spark plugs. So you have to look down in there to make sure those didn't fall out. Those are the biggest pain in the ass, really, because you can't see them easily. So I'm going to install the bolts, and we're going to put everything all back together here. Valve cover is installed, torqued down. I installed the coils, hooked those up. Throttle bodies are on. Routed that coolant line up here. All these coolant lines are hooked back up. We need to hook the bottom up on here still and then install the air box and drop the tank and then we'll start it up and we'll hear the noise again i imagine we still haven't located the origin of that so kind of disappointed but we do know that the top end looks okay at least uh the cams and such we're back in uh mostly one piece here so Let's hear it run. And it sounds okay right now, but what happens is sometimes it sounds okay, sometimes it's got that rattly noise. There it's coming. And you can rev it up and it goes away and then it comes back so it's really odd
Oops, I hit the kill switch. So I don't know what the heck is making that noise, but I think our next uh, objective will be to drop the oil pan and see if we can see anything down there. I just don't know what is making that noise. <laughs> I was hoping to find a uh, nut or a bolt or something bouncing around in the top end. I mean, that wouldn't be a wonderful thing to find, but at least it would explain it. I ran this thing up for quite a while here. It even got so hot that it started to piss out a little bit of coolant here, but uh, it's just off and on that noise and uh, I don't know and I'm starting to worry I guess it could be a bad crank bearing but it just seems odd that it would be off and on like that and if it's not something like that then it basically means I got to pull the motor because it's something inside that I can't see from the uh, from the outside that I have to uh, completely split this thing and at that point I already have a line on a, uh, a used engine for this thing. So at that point, I probably would just pick up a used engine, take this one apart anyway, but uh, taking it out and just slapping a used engine in. Of course, that's a gamble if you haven't heard it run, so who knows. But this is where we're going to end for today. Um, we did the valve check and looked at the top end of the engine, and nothing looks severely messed up up there i said i saw that uh, brass or copper or whatever that's indicative of a bearing failure so that's a very good possibility i guess we will wait until the next video now you gotta hang on and watch it so if you dig what i'm putting out give me that thumbs up leave a comment down below if you're not already please consider being a subscriber I appreciate each and every one of you who watch the videos and subscribe and leave comments. And uh, even my family who wants to make fun of me, go for it, dig in. <laughs> I ain't afraid. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.